Hello and welcome back to part 5 of our wave game mode base series. In this episode we're now going to be taking a look at our enemy pools and look at how we can determine what enemies appear in which waves. So let's go through the process of creating new enemies and adding them to our pool sizes. Hello and welcome back. So we've got our wave mode working uh, with our wave numbers and wave counts. But our enemy count doesn't change. It stays at 10 because we hard coded it in at 10. And also we've only got one type of enemy. So that is all happening because on our game mode, we have our enemy pool here set to enemy 10. We've hard coded it in. And when we've called the function to um, build the enemy pool, all we're doing at the moment is just getting the pool size. We're not actually calculating the pool before that. We need to actually work that out. So there's two ways you can do enemy pools. One is you can have it hard coded into like a data table or data asset, something like that. The second way is algorithmically. But there's actually a third secret way. And the third way is actually use both. So you start off with a predefined list. And if that list does not contain any more rows, because if you've gone exceedingly past it and you just want it to go on and on and on, then you can do it algorithmically instead. So let's talk about how we do this. So we're going to first of all create our data table for our pools. So we're going to create a new data asset and that'll be not data asset, data structure, sorry, blueprint and do data structure. And this will be um, uh, F wave struct and open this up. And the wave is going to contain a very simple thing. It's just going to contain the pool, which is a map. So we go enemy and uh, enemy pool rather and that be set to enemy and it'd be a class reference but made into a map with an integer so that's determining how many of each class of enemy are going to be in each round and that's all we've got to do here we'll just close out we're then going to go to our create our uh, data table we're going to miscellaneous data table and from the drop down I'm going to choose our wave struct okay and we'll do wave pool data open it up and in here we can now add different rows for each one the main thing we want to do in here is for the row name you want this to be equal to the, the same number of the wave so simply enough we need it to be equal to one the next one will be equal to two and so on the row name is important it has to be unique and um, easy for us to use because that's how we filter out which one we're going to use. So row name one, enemy pool. We're going to add a pool of enemies and we'll do 10. That's what we're starting off with. But then we'll say on wave two, go to enemy and we'll do 15. Three, enemy 20. And four, enemy 25 okay so it keeps going up and up and up we'll save that and close that then back on our build enemy pool this happens it has to all has to happen before we do the enemy remaining so that will go right at the end on the build enemy pool we're going to get data table row and the row name or data table first of all is wave pool and the row name will be the number of the wave that we want so take out your wave number Get that and we want to convert that to a string and go to string and then put that to the name there it'll convert it over for you and if the row is found that means we've got a struct we can use we can break that open and we can set that to our enemy pool here so we know what enemy pool we have available to us and then when it's finished that it'll go to enemy remaining and get calculate the pool size if the row is not found, this is where we'll do the algorithmic thing. More on that later. Let's just get this bit working first. So that'll go through the enemy pool and build the pool size up. So we can test that out. We should see the number increasing each round. So we start off with 10. And one more over there. There you go. Good way beginning. Now this should say 15. Yep, there you go, 15. But I still only get five at a time. Okay. 
So that's working perfectly. But let's say we want different types of enemies. So some of you want maybe a fast one or aggressive one or a boss one. We can change them up. So let's create a different enemy class and work that into our current data structure. So an enemy here, I'm going to create a child of it. Important that you make a child of these. And we'll call it enemy child. And to make it stand out, I'm just going to change the color of it. Yeah, to red or something. I don't know. Uh, oh, let's just do that one. That'd be fine. Oh, it stands out. That's what it matters. Um, and this one is going to go uh, as, as normal. Obviously, you can do whatever functionality you want for the enemies. That's not part of this, so we'll leave that aside. So now if I go back to my data structure, uh, data table, here we I can now go to each one of these and say, okay, in round one, it's all parent enemy classes. But in round two, I'm going to have 10 regular enemies and then five enemy children's, for example. Now comes the next bit. The next bit is we need to change and pick from that pool and remove them from that pool. So we know how many we've got left and which ones we've got left of. So if we go to the... Uh, uh, da, 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 start wave, and here we go. We get enemy from pool. That's all I want. And this is getting the pool. We get pool, and we want to get a random one from the keys. So we're gonna do keys. Plug that in, and do random array item. You want to promote that to a local variable. Local. Um, class choice. Every time you call random, it's going to give you a different result, potentially. So what you only want to do it once and then store the result. So now we've got it. We then want to take out our enemy pool. And we're going to do um, find the class choice. And then we're going to take this value and take one away from it. Subtract one like so and add uh, and then put that back into the enemy pool if it, the value is still greater than zero so when you take this value and do greater than zero if it's greater than zero i want to take out my enemy pool and do Add. add add will replace the current value so add we choose our local class choice as the one there and the value will be this new one we got it from here so subtract one will be the new value if it is uh false meaning that it is now equal to zero i want to clear that map from there so from that map reference i'm going to do remove and we're going to remove the class choice from that list. And in both of these cases, we want the return node to return the chosen class. So I'm going to copy that and put that on both. So our pool here, we're going to get all the keys. So all the enemies we could possibly have. Pick a random one out of those two. Find uh, one, uh, find the, how many we've got of each the one we've chosen. Take one away from it, and if it's greater than zero, add it into uh, change, uh, turn the value down. Otherwise, remove it from the class uh, list entirely. So let's save that and go back. Now we should see in the first round we get ten normal ones. And now we should get five orange ones up here. So there's two. Yeah. One, two. Oop. There's three. Four. Five orange ones. So that was the five. There shouldn't be any more any more orange ones appearing. And there we go. So it works a treat. 
we can now spawn in different enemy types based upon what round we're on. But as I mentioned, if we go above the number and we can't find any rows of the number of waves that we're on, then we want to do it algorithmically. So if we go back to our game mode and go back to that uh, build pool, on row not found is where we do the algorithmic style. And all we're going to do is we're going to take out our enemy pool and we're going to do add to this. And, it's, and the algorithm you use for this could be absolutely anything you want. So, for example, we can go through and add one of each type. So, I can go to enemy and I can randomize this number here. And I'll do random integer in range. And we can say the minimum would be, say, I don't know, 10. And the maximum will be based upon the wave number. Put the wave number in and multiply that by, I don't know, 5. You know, whatever algorithm you want to come up with. Put that in. And you do it again, but this time you're going to do. Uh, enemy child, we just dragged it out. But the algorithm for this one may be a little bit different because it's a little bit rarer, maybe, or you know, wherever it may be. So it could have like a small number here, five, and this one could be three, whatever. So to test that out, if I go back to my pool data, I'm gonna move waves three and four. Uh, let's just uh, delete that and play. Okay, and let's get to wave three. Got sake, come here. There you go. Uh, get to wave two. Okay, you should still see only five of these orange ones. And now it's going to be algorithmic, so it'd be very different. Uh, ah, problem, yes. So enemies remaining is still zero. That's because in the game mode, when we do this, get pull size of enemy remaining, we've got to do that on here too. Oh, yeah. Okay, we'll do it again. Um, we'll just cut straight to the uh, the fight going on in round three. Okay, so we're going to round three now, and our enemy number is now six. So somehow randomly got a smaller number. Sure. How did it work out that? Uh, didn't I change? Yeah, problem was I didn't change this enemy here to enemy child. There we go. Right, cut back to round three again. Okay, going to round three. We should see a larger number now. There you go, 22. So, now it's algorithmically changing how many are going to be appearing. So there you go. We can now add enemies uh, to whatever wave we like and decide and design each wave accordingly. In the next episode, it's going to be the last of the series, and we're going to go through the process of creating conditional spawners. So these are spawners that are going to uh, turn on at certain points in the game. So it could be when you reach a certain round, it could be when you hit certain points, whatever it may be. I'm going to show you how to filter those out when you do the get spawners function. You can watch the next episode right now on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, where you can find all my videos early from just $1 a month. Thank you to all the patrons and members for their continued support. Make sure you subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.